السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده <تصفيق> لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وعنا معهم لا يوم الدين سك الله خير وضعه تكفى لما تشبارك الله فيه <تصفيق> والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate, the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected brothers and sisters, the title of my khutbah today will be Defending your religion at times of weakness has much more value and appreciation by your Lord. 
to stand for saying the haqq in the system of faith that you believe when the majority they don't care or feel afraid has a different taste and a different value in the sight of Allah and the Day of Judgment. You need to know this. Before, I will be quoting and rephrasing an article by an Egyptian brother, his name is Khalid Hamdi. It's in Arabic. I will be using the core of his words, inshallah, in English. But before I start quoting him, <coughs> Before I start quoting him, I want to remind myself and you respected selves. It's something, it's a fact. What I will be is a fact. But we need to remind ourselves because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind. Because indeed, reminder does benefit the believer. Look, benefit the believer. Because you are already a believer. <laughs> My job or someone else's job or your job at a certain time to remind each other because we might forget. We might pass through some weakness time. So like the one who is metaphorically drunk, you know, he needs someone to wake him up. Sometimes he will be waked by physically a slap, the really drunk person. The spiritually drunk person who's busy, you know, in many things, busy in the social media, busy in the influencers, busy in collecting the money, he's a believer, but he forgot. He's a believer, but his mind is busy in something else. So we need to remind ourselves. Okay? Now, what is the fact that I need to remind myself of and you respect yourselves? We are Muslims. But what is Islam? Islam is a declaration by you and me that we say, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. The literal meaning of Islam in Arabic, when we translate it to English, it's submission. Islam in Arabic goes to two radicals or two root verbs silm taslim as if the very clever or the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-hakim when he decided to name this religion by Islam this name's religion is not Muhammadanism as some orientalists say we are not worshippers of Muhammad <laughs> no no Muhammad is a prophet and a messenger. He came to convey a message. We are a worshiper of Allah. The core point of our religion is submission. Which means, because by the way, many people, they believe in the existence of Allah. Not just us. Many people, they know Allah. But here comes the deal. Here comes the serious point. Who decided to submit? That's why the kafir is called the kafir. The kafir is not the one who does not know. By the way, the kafir is not the one who does not have a faith system. He knows. He believes linguistically, but he refuses to submit. Just let me tell you something. We as Muslims, we say, I bear witness, which means, I'm declaring, Ya Allah, that I decided to submit myself according to your will. This is Islam. If the owner of this universe, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, told me, don't drink. Even if I like to drink, I would love to drink, I'll stop drinking. When the owner of this universe who created me, and I know that he exists, and I believe that he will take my soul, and I will meet him. If he said, don't lie, even though my desire, my interest, my business, my power depends on lying, I will not lie. This is Islam. Or otherwise, I'm not a submitter to Allah. I'm submitting to my desires. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهَهُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمُ Have you not seen, O Muhammad, 
the one who decided to take his Lord, his God, his own desire. So my desire now, according to my power, that this is right. Okay, it will be right, because I decided to consider it right. <laughs> Later on, my interests, my maslaha, my whatever, I need to consider this wrong. So now it's wrong. No, Habibi. <laughs> That's why in Islam, it's impossible as Muslims to believe that there is objectivity, objectivity in this world. It's impossible. Always we are subjective. Because we go to our desires, our needs, or something. The only objective, the true objectivity, mawdu'iyah, is just by an external power. And this external power should be above the human beings because we are weak and we are inclined to our interests and our needs. I will support you if you are my cousin. You will support me if I'm your brother. If I'm from your race, your culture, your power, some interest, we will, and we have power. That's why colonial, colonial, colonialism happened. Why? A group of Europeans, they were sitting, they have the power. So they decided to occupy other countries. No one was able to occupy them. Enslaved millions, killed millions. Okay, no power. From them, they can't justify it. Do you think German people, before they start applying Nazism, they were not clever? You think they were not clever? Who can claim that Germans they are not clever? <laughs> they have the best brains on planet Earth. Best brains. But because of the power, Mr. Hitler decided to tell them, hey, we are better. Okay, Mr. Hitler, what's next? Because we are better, we are superior. Okay, what's next? So let's kill everyone. We decide that he does not deserve to live. And they did it. That's why people need to submit to Allah. When any group of people, look to Romans, Persians, Pharaohs, wherever you go, it's a human phenomenon. If Allah is not part of our calculations, any one of us, once he has the power, will act as if he's God. That's why we need what we call to subjugate ourselves to Allah. This is Islam. That's why we don't have something called Muhammadanism, okay? No, we say Muslims, which means you submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let me come to why I decided to put, this is, this is my introduction. Now, Brother Khaled Hamdi, I'm quoting, rephrasing, and translating his word, because originally it was in Arabic. He says, I thought about those mentioned in the Quran other than the prophets why those spe specifically he was wondering he was looking to the Quran Allah decided to highlight a group of specific people apart from prophets and messengers pause now prophets and messengers we don't have a, any way to understand how when why Allah decides to choose them and that's it. They are chosen by Allah. So they are out of the calculations. In, in Islam, there is no way in our aqidah that someone, if you do such and such, you can be a prophet. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's impossible, okay? Yani, wallahi, if you memorize the Quran, and if you, for example, did tazkiyah purification for your heart, and you became like monks, you went to the mountain, and you stayed in a cave for 15 years, blah, 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 blah. you will be a prophet. No, 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 no. Prophethood is pure, pure choice by Allah. Okay, let's close this file. So this person, the writer, say, I was wondering why Allah decided to highlight specific persons apart from prophets and messengers. And I will mention some of them, like Mu'min al-Fir'aun. Mu'min in Surah Yasin. Why? Why Allah highlighted this? وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى Why? وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِّنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهِ Well, Allah is praising this believer from the people of Pharaoh. Why? Even though he's not a prophet and he's not a messenger. Just another pause to give you a piece of information. We know about 25 prophets and messengers by names. However, Allah said clearly in the Quran, and other messengers, we have not told you about them. However, in an authentic hadith, Prophet Muhammad was asked by 
المرأة الصحابة said يا رسول الله ما عدة الأنبياء والرسل what's the number of prophets and messengers he said عدة الأنبياء مئة وأربعة وعشرون ألفا he said prophets in the history of humanity are 124 thousands the messengers amongst them are 315 so what's the difference between prophet and messenger Prophet and Messenger, both are chosen by Allah, both they receive revelation. The Messenger, he receives a revelation plus a new law, a new sharia, a new teachings, okay? Now, the Prophet is someone who's following the footsteps of a previous Messenger. He did not have a new sharia, okay? For example, Musa alayhi salam is a Prophet and Messenger. He received the sharia. Isa alayhi salam, is a prophet and messenger because wali uhill lakum ba'd alladhi hurrima alaykum wali ad'a ankum israkum he came with modification of the sharia law or the law or the sharia of the jews with this modification he became a prophet and messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a prophet and messenger by sulaiman alayhi salam prophets following the footsteps of musa alayhi salam Dawood alayhi salam, prophet, following the footsteps of Musa alayhi salam. Ayyub alayhi salam, Imran, Ibn al all of our, they are called the prophets of the children of Israel. Who's their messenger? Musa alayhi salam. Okay, I go back to this. In the history, we have 124,000 prophets, 315 messengers, we know from them just 25. So you can imagine how millions and millions and millions of incidents, stories happened in reality and Allah knows every single one of them. However, Allah decided to mention some. <laughs> Why? Here comes the question. This is his question. He said, I was wondering, because you know, Quran is the final revelation, the final constitution. He said, I was wondering, I thought about those mentioned in the Quran other than prophets. Why those specifically? Why the believer of Ali Yasim and the believer of Pharaoh's family? Why the people of the trench? Ashab al Ukhdud. Wasamai that al Buruj, wal yawm al Mawud, Qutila Ashab al Ukhdud, and Nari that al Wakud, Idhum Aleha Qurud, the people of the trench who were burned alive. By the way, they were, to the best of our information, they were Christians. Following Isa alayhi salam in the old, original, genuine version of the Sharia of Allah in Christianity. However, this group of genuine Muslim Christians, in their time, they were tortured and burned alive by a paganist king, and they were burned alive. Okay? So, he says, I... Why the people of the trench and the youth of the cave, Fityatul Kahf? Why those people? Allah mentioned them. He said, I found them all organized by one thread and gathered by one strand. There's some common thing between them. He continues. They were positive. This, here comes now. Please highlight, fix, drill it in your psyche, please. They were Positive, despite the darkness of the image, the power of falsehood, the harshness of the road, and the lack of companions. They did their best despite the tyranny of Pharaoh, the digging of the canyons, and the king's willingness to kill them. But they were excused to their lord. They expanded their efforts and exerted their efforts despite there is a small number or even when they were alone. That's why their Lord honored them. So he exalted their status and their remembrance was immortalized in the Quran. Even the dog of the people of the cave, when he accompanied those who were steadfast in the truth, despite their fewness, fewness, he was mentioned in the Quran alone above their number. So go out like them and do their favor. Even 
if even if end ends like them giving to religion at the time of its weakness and siege is better with God a thousand thousand times more than you're giving to it at the time of its strength and the abundance of its supporters I end quoting his article he was talking about darkness the power of the battle falsehood is dominance this is the point so I decided to say no 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 this is wrong how dare you this is wrong hey it's wrong okay I have no power but just to say the that's it one of the interesting things brother before I continue can you just have some space for you brothers who are standing if you can come step forward and you can squeeze to your right hand my left please forwards and squeeze to this side please if you can may Allah accept may Allah let all of you to be from the people of the Jannah inshallah and we have such a gathering in the Jannah inshallah ya Rabbi. we will remember these moments by the way <laughs> we will remember inshallah we will remember كانوا إن قبل في أهلنا مشفقين فمن الله علينا ووقانا عذاب السموم. You will be remembering these times, by the way. We will, إن شاء الله. خدنا في القرآن. إن شاء الله. When we sit in the Jannah, we will be chatting while having happiness, remembering. Do you remember when we were suffering, sitting in such and such country? We were not able to say the حق and the truth because we were oppressed. Do you remember when they threatened us, if you don't such and such, we will go to the jail and we refused to say, we were kicked out. Do you remember when we go to jail? Yes, I remember. Alhamdulillah. وَقَانَ رَبُّنَا وَقَانَ عَبَوَ السُّمُمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us because of this. Yes, we remember this. This is according to the Quran. Tens of ayat. They talk about this. I go back. Simple, symbolic, short movie, like a semi-drama. Gives an idea amazingly about what do we mean when you stand for the haq when the majority they are afraid or they keep silent. It has a value. And by the way, no one is forcing you to do so, but you need to know if you want to be a hero in the sight of Allah, there is a tax that must be paid. This is, this is the idea. The idea now in our human calculations, someone says, I want to be Harvard graduate. Okay. Forget religion. I'm not discussing haram and halal. I'm discussing normal human. How many people on earth would love to be Harvard graduate? Millions. How many of them can achieve it? Big challenge. Big challenge. You have to be smart, clever, social. You have to do many things and to pay a lot, a lot of money. Either the son of multi-millionaire or billionaire or you have very exceptional things, you will be competing with millions of people. I said, it's, it's amazing. But once you are there, the dunya is open for you. Subhanallah, this is what happened. So some people, they spend five, ten years of their time struggling just to be Harvard students. Did they pay the tax? Yes, in the worldly level. Yes. Someone would love to be world championship in bodybuilding. Let's speak with guys now. Champion, big hero with bodybuilding. Is there a tax that must be paid? Or just I will keep making dua? Or I will keep crying? Or I'll keep dreaming? No, 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 Habibi. You know, 10 years of very strict plan. Every day to the gym. Weight lifting. Weight lifting. I will stop eating a lot of things. I'll have something that I hate even to smell. But I will swallow because I need protein. I will keep weight lifting smelling the sweat bad sweat of myself and the surrounding people six hours a day ten years is this suffering or not we we as a moment is this something nice no Allah you know but why we as men might be doing this because I want six packs triceps biceps I want when I walk in the street everyone say oh okay I have paid the tax for this if I don't care with haram and halal, I want every girl in the street to say, wow, I would love this to be my boyfriend. Or simply I want to use my power <laughs> to hit anyone I would like. <laughs> Neither, either, or. Do we do this in our worldly life or not? Do we pay the tax to achieve this? So therefore, 
please, Jannah is much more better than having a good muscles or Harvard graduate. <laughs> so they are just short term and it's finished. And there's no guarantee to have them, by the way. Imagine that I have the power and the capacity and the ability to be world championship in bodybuilding. Imagine. Is there a guarantee? Ten years of training and about to achieve it to have the prize or whatever. Small car accident. Jannah is a prayer. <laughs> you will pray Jannah with me. No guarantee. But when you sign a contract with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not play games with us. When he promises, he fulfills. I might break my promise. You might break it. Allah does not. So when he say, if you do such and such, I will let you reside in the Jannah forever. Khalas, that's it. Trust it. Anyone else, a human being, will not. What is this simple, symbolic, short film? I saw it, really, it has a message. <coughs> and I will finish my <coughs> khutbah with it. The story, or the short film, a teacher comes to a class. The students, they are about 15. They are in the average age of 10, 11, 12. He's giving them on the blackboard the math. He say one plus one equals five. What? Say, so repeat after me. One plus one equals five. They look at each other. The common sense says this is wrong. They know it's wrong. But the authority and the power of the teacher, repeat after me. One plus one equals what? They say five. Five. One of them, he say, excuse me, one plus one equals two. He say, no, it's five. He say, but it's two. No, it's five, and you have to accept it's five. If you do not, you will be punished. He said, sir, one plus one, it's a fact. He says, not anymore. One plus one equals what? What do you think? Five. What do you say? Two. Come here. Last chance. One plus one equals five. He will ask senior students, they will come, they will act something as if they are holding machine guns, they will do like this, he will be killed, he will be a martyr. So everyone will be much more scared. Then after taking them, they will wipe the blood of his body from, and the blood was coming on one plus one equals five. Everyone else, one plus one equals what? He said, five. One of them, he could not say it, he wrote, one plus one equals two. <laughs> he just did it on the something. Okay, the story is finished. Sometimes, the, by the way, all of them, they know that one plus one equals two. <laughs> but they are scared because of the power. Now, you have two ways of thinking. Materialistic people, they say, ooh, poor, ya ammi, hutra. In Arabic, we have hutra sak bin al-rus, rus, which means, ah, don't argue, don't waste your time, khalas, yani, they have the power. Yani, I'm ready. Habibi, if you accept it now, this, someone else will come, but from my point of view, and I feel that one plus one might equal eight. What do you think? Wallahi, I feel it equals seven. You will destroy the meaning. You will destroy the existence. There is no meaning anymore for the word. Someone should stand and say, no, one plus one equals two. But you are a minority. Haq has nothing to do with majority and minority. Even if 10 million stay, one plus one equals five, it equals two. It's a fact. <laughs> Idiots. Haq. Crazy. It's haq. Prophets and messengers, they were like, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was accused as what? Magician, troublemaker, you know, liar, but was holding the haq. This is just a quick message for us, that if you want to be praised, really, look, are you living in the time of darkness and attacking the haq? Small efforts, you will be equal to Abu Bakr and Umar, if you wish. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفرين أستغفر الله in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all the praise and thanks are due to him. Peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
ان الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير brothers and sisters we are about to face a very very difficult time people on earth you know there's an attack against family against the fitra against the inner nature against the haq all people are suffering you need to know this i think you understand everyone is suffering on earth now i'm not talking about muslims no no muslims are part of the people on the earth but i believe and i hope you share me this faith the only group of people on earth who can keep holding to the haq because they have the haq and can defend the humanity and keep the fitra are just muslims because simply no one can get any bugs or virus into their system because it's protected by allah <laughs> It's a divine antivirus. All other softwares somehow infected. So they can't work. By the way, it's not something you have to be proud. It's a milha of Allah. It's a blessings of Allah. Allah is using in the Arabic word the majestic we. In Arabic, when we say Allah, when we say inna, he's using the plural. It's us. It means it's called in English. The majestic we, like when a king or a queen, we say, we, King Charles, have ordained that blah, blah, blah. This is in English. In Arabic, say, inna, it's called the majestic we. That's why Allah say, inna, nahnu, nazzalna dhikra. Because some people say, hey, you Muslims, you believe in Tawheed. We, we means what? You have gods? Say, Habibi, please understand Arabic. It's, this is called the majestic, the plural of majestic we, okay? Anyway, Allah says, it's us who reveal the Quran, the dhikr, and it's us who will protect it. So therefore, this system is protected. Whenever you use it, it will work and it will fix. So, by the way, humanity is waiting for you. You know what I'm talking about? Waiting for you. So please reschedule your priorities in your life and know what is the role that you have to be playing. اللهم ارحمنا فوق الارض وتحت الارض ويوم العرض عليك يا كريم اللهم ارحمنا وارحم والدينا ووالد والدينا واصحاب الحقوق والواجبات علينا اللهم انا عبيدك ابناء عبيدك ابناء امائك نواصينا بيدك ماض فينا حكمك عدل فينا قضاؤك نسالك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك وانزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلوبنا وجلاء أحزاننا وذهاب همومنا وهمومنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة